Welcome to Electro Online. The secondary method, which has now become the most popular method to determine whether or not there are planets around stars nearby our solar system, uh, extrasolar, uh, extrasolar planets, is called the transit method. If the orbit of the planet takes it in such a line so that it moves in front of the disk from our perspective, that's what we call a planetary transit. And so when a planet moves in front of the disk of the star, the light coming from the star will be dimmed somewhat because we don't, of course, see that portion of the star. So when the normal intensity right here is about at this level, and then we see the level drop, stay, and then go back up, and we can then calculate the duration of time, we can then surmise that that must have been a planet moving in front. And of course, that happens on a regular basis, but it happens again and again and again, we can then figure out what the orbit of that planet is based upon the time duration and based upon the amount of the dimming and the size of the star and so forth. We're able to figure out quite a bit about that planet. Secondly, when the planet moves behind the disk of the sun, we sometimes have a minuscule amount of dimming that is actually perceptible. We can see that because the planet does reflect some light and so we can see that. And so we, when the planet is over there versus behind the disk, we can see a small amount of dimming of light coming from that region. This is much more difficult to detect, of course, than this one right here. In addition to that, when, the, when we look at the star and the planet and when the planet is very close to where the star is, we see further what we call absorption from the absorption spectrum from the light coming from that region. When the planet is far away from the star, we're just looking at the star, the amount of absorption in certain frequencies and wavelengths will only be this much, but with the planet in close vicinity, absorbing the light of the star and then resubmitting that absorbed radiation, we can then see the additional absorption can be caused by, the, by what we call the atmosphere around the star, uh, around the planet, and from that we can determine sometimes what the consistency of the atmosphere is, whether it's the composition of the atmosphere, how much atmosphere is there. So we have all kinds of methods of actually determining there's a planet there, we know how big it is, we know how fast it's moving, and then we can actually begin to detect some of the composition of the atmosphere of some of those planets. Typically, again, we're dealing with very large gas planets, so the signature is strong enough for us to detect it from many light years away. Eventually, when our capability increases, we're going to be able to do that for smaller planets as well, and eventually Earth-like planets, but we're not quite there yet. But the transit method has become such a successful method that now it's become the primary ways in which we detect planets outside our solar system. And that's the way it is today.